All right, so this section here is one that I actually hadn't intended to include in this class. Um, but when I was doing the section with the mica sprays, I was like, oh, I bet you I should do one with Perfect Pearls. Um, to show you, you can get some similar looks to it. It's not going to be nearly as fluid looking as the um, pearl sprays or the mica sprays simply because it's not fluid it's a powder but you can get some fun shimmery effects with that so I'm gonna do it to, I'm actually gonna do four different samples here I don't have samples to show you ahead of time so you're just we're just gonna do it all together so I have a light surface and a dark surface I'm gonna use these four colors here we've got perfect copper perfect gold this one is forever red and this one is forever green and then I've got a light and a dark surface here and for this one I'm going to show you um, interference red and interference green together um, just because those are different ones they do slightly different things than the other ones so let's go so the very first one I'm gonna do is on the light surface here we're gonna do that same stamp with the Versa mark ink this is the same ink that we're doing that we use for I'm just gonna turn that over I've got some Something on there, but my uh, die cut will cover it. Um, this is the same sticky ink that we use for embossing. And what we're doing with it, with this, is we're going to stamp with the Versamark ink, and then we're gonna dust the Perfect Pearls powder, and it will stick to where the ink is. Now, Perfect Pearls powder, it's a mica powder that has a binding agent in it that is activated with water. So you have to mist it with water to activate that binding agent. And we'll do that at the end. So I've got a very fluffy brush here. I can use the same brush with all of the different colored Perfect Pearls. And once again, you could do these all one color. Like I could take this Perfect Copper and do the entire thing, just the one color, and it would work beautifully. I just, for this class, I wanted to do a bunch of different colors together because part of the fun to me of fall leaves is the mixture of color you get on each one. I just think it looks really pretty. And I just, for this class, wanted to kind of show you a bunch of different ways you could emulate that effect um, in card making using one stamp site, basically. So that one there is Forever Red. And then the last color is Forever Green. Get a little bit of green on there. You can dust your, or you can um, swipe your brush on a paper towel while you're working if you're wanting to clean a color up off of it between colors. These two I didn't really matter too much because they're kind of within the same color, family color tones, but I definitely wanted to do that before the green one. So in order to get all of this mica off of the background of your card, a Swiffer Duster is your best friend and you can use that same one over and over again. I've been using this one for a very very long time. So that is what it looks like before we spray. Now to spray it I'm just going to take my Distress Sprayer. I'm just going to move this out of the way just so I don't miss those and I'm going to move my paper out of the way so I don't miss that. Just a couple light sprays and then set it aside to dry. Um, if you find that it hasn't set in the way you would find that out is after it's completely dry you would just rub it if you get some on your hand I tend to get a little bit on my hand but sometimes um, misting it a second time and letting that dry or even a third time if that makes you feel comfortable will just help set those powders a little bit better now as far as I'm aware perfect pearls are the only mica powder that has a binding agent in it there are other mica powders. Pearl X is one of them. It doesn't have a binding agent in it. So in order to do this same technique, you would need to add one. Um, and there's, it's called gum arabic. And it says the instructions right on the side of it. It's one part gum arabic to four parts of the mica powder. So if you have those, if you have Pearl X or um, Prima also has mica powders as well, if you have a different brand and it doesn't have a binding agent in it, you could add one to do this technique. So you don't necessarily need to only get these if you already have some mica powders. So these 
four here that I'm using are kind of metallic powders. So they show up similarly on the light background as they do on the dark background. And what I mean by that is the metallic in them looks fairly similar. When we get to the interference colors, you're gonna see a big difference between the two backgrounds, which is why I wanted to show both of them and I wanted to show them separately so that you could see the difference between them. You probably can't see on the camera, but I can kind of see where my stamped image is. And you can't actually collect any of this excess powder, so anything excess is just gets wiped off with the Swiffer and um, the Swiffer cloth and tossed. But really, the powders go a long, long way. I've had some of my pots of mica powders or these perfect pearls for years, so you don't have to really worry about um, wasting them because they go a long, long way. The other fun thing because of the binding agent in them is you can actually mix the Perfect Pearls with water and create shimmery watercolors with them. Put that to the side. So there we are on the black background. I'll show you both of them up close. Both of them absolutely beautiful. And you can see that those makas look very similar on the two backgrounds. So this one again, I'm going to mist it to set the powder. And you wanna have a mister that makes a nice fine spray. I realized I didn't get too much spray on this side. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna set that aside to dry while we're working on the next ones. Wanna make sure to clean my brush off before the next one so that you can see the difference and I don't get residue from that particular one on there. Now, because when we're doing the micas, we have excess, I definitely recommend working on a scrap piece of paper just to catch that excess powder. And the interference colors, they only come in a few colors. I think there's also interference, there's violet, there might be blue. They don't come in very many colors, but they're just fun for something a little bit different. So I'm gonna do the white background first because it's really not very impressive on the white, but it's really, really cool on the black. But you definitely have to try them on both backgrounds to be able to see the difference in person. So on the light background, you'll see a tiny little bit of shimmer in the light, but you're really not gonna see a whole lot of, a whole lot of it. So it's gonna look kind of like pastel colors. Exactly the same process as before. I'm gonna leave that open just in case I wanna grab a little bit more. There we go, I think that's good. I'm going to close this even though I want it for the next one. I wanna make sure to have it closed when I'm missing water. I don't wanna mist water in my pots. Once again, get the Swiffer cloth. Move this out of the way. So, whoops. A very pretty, but a very subtle background with that one there. Let's miss this one and let it sit. 